este en el que habría que hacer esto. Y esto es una de las partes que hay que estudiar mucho. Let me start. My name is Krzysztof and I will be talking about how to work with ASAP deadlines and other problems we have at work. I will be also talking about that from the perspective of health because I'm working very close to the health industry in neuro projects where we're responsible for neurotherapy. Uh, so we're responsible to bring people back to health. Um, as far as I can see, there is a certain problem in many industries, not only in the film industry, here we're more condemned to that because you have your we have our passion we have this engagement and quite often we can pay for getting the project ready ready uh, on time with time certain standards stand become a norm C certain pathologies become a norm the problem is that people believe because it's not so that our 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 state uh, gets worse by 50% drops by 50% but the process towards going bad going towards bad health it's it's a process which which is long term and we get adapted to that we get used to that it's becoming more more normal for us that we can't sleep well we we get up at 3 a.m. every morning and and uh, it's just so f with us we don't even notice that because i have so many things on my head and my focus is elsewhere. Moving on, we also have other pathologies that we get up um, in bad shape. Uh, different from this one, that we get up, you know, bloated during the day. We also do not pay attention that our back hurts. And in general, the fact that our back hurts is not a normal thing. That this meme is so popular, it also shows me that this problem I exists. There's also an example when we have uh, patients who, and during the interview, we ask them about if they they don't feel bad, they say, no, we feel okay. And then we make the interview, we do the diagnostics, and we see that some, something is wrong with the right side of the body. And I'm thinking, oh, is everything okay with your, with your back? And they say, no, for the last two, three years, every day after I get up for two, three hours, my back hurts. And they don't say that it's in the interview because they don't think it's a problem. Those problems are not standard and we shouldn't overlook them. What else might happen? With time, when this state of bad functioning prolongs, it starts to get on our head and we might become very unnice to other people like Snipe was for Harry. No, you don't even know why. What, 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 what did Harry do to the Snipe? You know, all know Harry Potter. You watched it. Swavek was filming it, so it would be stupid not to. It, it would not be wise not to watch it. So we could be the same for ourselves. We always have some problem. We, we, our head is go getting into sort of s problem searching mode, and we do not focus on the things that we should should focus on. We're not focusing on the project, on on the priorities that we've set for us. Apart from that a snipe for Harry, we might become the same for other people. And this relates to a lot of risk because the team that we have or we work with can, uh, as a consequence, they can leave us because they don't want to work with somebody who behaves in such a way. And we behave in such a way, not because we're guilty for that, but, but there's too much on our head. Many of you pro probably know the example that they say he came back from he came back from holidays and he, he's gonna be fine. I mean, he came back. His uh, his uh, nervous system is in a better shape, and it's good to work with him then. Two two weeks of bad management of, of bad self management, and again you don't want to work with that person. So it's better to avoid such situations. So what is the remedy to all these situations? First, you have to learn to say no. It's good to learn to say no because if we take too many projects on our heads, you will pay not only with yourself, but our clients will be less happy with us not getting our projects across, that we won't get things on time, etc. And the problem is that if we get ob obliged to something, we give our word that we will complete the project, and we don't do that, our self-assessment um, also suffers. 
if if we're not uh, if, if we're not consistent in delivering results it, it works horribly for our own mentality because we give ourselves the signal that you cannot depend on ourselves and i have a question to you what would happen imagine imagine your life if 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 every time you kept your word what your life would look like and now you can think about it what would happen if every time when you tell yourself okay I'm starting with a gym, I will, I will keep to that, and you would keep to that. What would happen if every time when you say, now, now I will um, eat healthily, what would happen then if you kept to that? What would happen if you said, okay, I'll write that script, and in, with consequence, every day you would write several pages. I think with every one of us, we would respect much more the world that we're giving to ourselves, uh, then our life would look in a totally different different way. So, if you are in a situation that we feel like we want to ha have additional project because we will manage that, we'll we'll complete that. Don't better don't do that, because not only your image of your uh, your own self image will suffer, but also our clients will see at that at us as, as people who are not trustworthy. This is a slide that I already discussed. Oh yeah, the box rule. We are talking about those rules and there's the question of intensity. There's a very simple uh, rule in boxing, which Szymon Majewski told me about when we were shooting an interview with him. And the rule is hit and jump back, hit and jump back. In reality, it's like he said fucking hit, but we won't be uh, using those words here. Shimon gave an example. He was in a rock concert. And during this rock concert, he fell asleep. Why did he fall asleep in a rock concert? Because he had a lot of intensity and there was no no uh, change in that. And as a result, he had nothing to bounce against. And that, so with the same intensity, even if, if we're... If we have a lot of projects, a lot is happening in our lives, this huge intensity without rest, without the moment when we can take a breathe and, and concentrate, we will, you, will not, you, you will not even notice that you were always in the high functionality mode. You have a moment to bounce, to understand where we are and to take some rest. What can we do with it? Here we've got the element of introspection. I will tell you basing my own example because w one year ago I started to earn a lot of money. A lot of money for me is above 10,000 zlotys per month, like for, uh, 2,000 euro per month. This is where I made my, uh, when I reached my business assumptions for a year already in April and you would think that this is a moment when I was happy with me and everything was great, but I, it didn't happen so. In reality, this was the moment when I I was pressing even more to earn more money, that I need to get more out of the situation and the circumstances that I'm in. I didn't have this bounce, the, nothing to hit, to bounce again. And a, a wise person uh, told me that I'm talking a lot about money, but I'm okay with the money. So why does it happen so? So this is an incredibly important element that I will be ta talking about now. Somebody from the outside told me about that. I'm not always, you are not always able to, to assess your own situation and life in an objective way. I would go a step further. Usually, if we do not have such, such some great system for self-management which you develop over years, it's very easy to get lost. And thanks to the fact that I had this person that uh, uh, made me pay not notice to that, this allowed me to go into introspective mode and see that it's pathological. I started to think about this topic. I talked with myself and I really calmed down with like working and earning more. I understood that I do not have to press so hard. And here we get into the element which is key according to me. Because the more I function, the more I see that our brain is in a way stupid. If we enter a community of stupid people, then we will become stupid in a way. If we're surrounded by wise people, we will get adapted to them and we'll become wiser and wiser. This also applies, I think, that uh, about ourselves as a 
as like a ball when you pull in a certain surrounding you get you get uh, permeated with what surrounds you so if you get up every morning and you turn on the instagram and you start to absorb the news the information that is there we absorb that somebody's on a holiday and having fun or we absorb that there's war there's economic crisis and everything is really bad and then uh, you have a mixture of your own problems because our head starts to enter this mode of thinking all this leads to uh, to having a toxic mixture in which our head is get, getting permeated with those problems and our head starts to function accordingly in the pathological mode that results from our surrounding but our head is uh, in a feedback loop and we start to talk about ourselves uh, in a more negative way. And here are the expectations. Where do the expectations come from? The expectations expectations come from those <coughs> non-real things on the on holiday that everybody's always on on vacation. Also, that everybody around us says that everything is awesome with me, and nobody talks about their problems. That the reality and and LinkedIn reality is are two different things. I also started to think that how many in life I had a situation myself that we are in a certain group of people, we don't, I don't even know them very well, and I started to tell about projects we did. And everybody talks about these nice situations. I always, um, I'm, I'm talking about FSO. I mean, there was a lot of work here, a lot of challenges, a lot of problems, but I will say that, you know, so Aromir Ijak was sitting in the third row when I was presenting my project. Okay, so I will show the project that I did and the, its final effect. I will not say that files were gone during the filming and I was very, very sad at that moment. That's the reality in Instagram. And that's the other side of the coin. We don't talk about that. It's very often to get alienated. It's very easy to think that only we have a problem, that um, we don't want to do things that that I'm telling really unnice things about myself. It applies to many, many people. And what we can do, a good thing we can do for ourselves, is to control our exposition. By control of our exposition, I'm, I mean, I understand it multi, in multidimensional sense. So if we're talking about Instagram, spend some time for introspection and point your attention to how the profile that I see how, how that what I see on Instagram from the point of um, filming etc works for me it's very easy to start an Instagram and and get all the in information without uh, without thinking but it's not that it doesn't work for us it's, it works even better on our subconscious because we're susceptible and things you know get locked in our heads so stop and think how this will work on you if it has a negative impact on you just just unfollow a certain profile if certain things do not work then i then i should not should not enter instagram and see uh, that my friend is driving a porsche Con exposition control goes even further we go back to the element of the community of this of our environment i was once in a community of i'm talking about my group of friends with whom when i was talking to them they were talking about their lives about their studies and at the moment when i was started to talking about the things um the things i do more related to av industry about my achievements about the the problems i have and thoughts i had nothing to bounce against so so i felt misunderstood my head started to tell me that what i'm doing is not not worthwhile and but the reality is different if you change the community into the people from more of my um, industry, I start to function in a totally different framework. For me, the change of community, the co change of environment is the best lever you can get because I do not need to think a lot about myself. Hello. Welcome, join us in the first row. Uh, 
for me, the change of your environment is the best the best level I can get for myself because my head automatically starts to function in a different framework. The same might apply to work. If in my work, for example, somebody comes to me and says, at my age, I mean, in my generation, things were done differently. And you young people, you have this, this and that, that you do not do deliver your work. If I do not have a, have a control over my exposition, I will get it to myself. I can hear this, this, this message 10, ten mo times a month, it will become my standard. This exposition has to be controlled. And in my, mm, as m in my point of view, if we will not be Arnold Schwarzeneggers, of the explosion control, we will not be able to stop every negative message that is directed at us. Our head will accept that anyway. We're not able not to take that in. A much better thing that we can do is to change the environment and leave the environment. We do not have to spend our energy, our spend our kilojoules to control what comes to us from the surroundings. It's better to delete Instagram and this uh, fake beautiful reality or things related to the climate crisis or war or whatever then consciously process it and make it and rationalize it of course you cannot go too much far away from reality and say that reality is fake there is no war there is no climate crisis you need some humility however you always have to think and verify everything uh, from the point of view if you have agency for example, if I'm reading for the third day about the um, the agency, does it translate into my agency? Or do I get to the moment where this information gets into my head and I'm so overburdened that this information that I cannot get up from my bed and nothing and, and I can do nothing else? Because in this way, we're not helping in any way if our agency is killed, if there's too much over our head. This is what we teach to every one of our patients. Uh, take care of yourself by taking care of others. If I'm healthy, that is a moment when I can, I can really translate that into some good for the world and not be sniped too happy. I will talk about that in a while. Um, in terms of um, exposition control, a very important thing is our the most important thing is our head, which is always working for us. It's all it's good to realize that I do not have a, like a special control over my head talks to me. So when we understand that, there will be a moment when we will notice all the thoughts that come to your head. And I remember such a case uh, from a project I did in, in one of the commissions. I was I had to talk to people, I had to make interviews, I had to create the material which would describe the reality. The training that would take place, that took place, there was an um, interaction between people. So I had to get into interaction with those people. And there was a moment, the third, fourth day of that project, when I said, I think I'm not well seen here. Those people don't want to talk to me. This person doesn't like me. And I started to get into this uh, scheme of alienation. But at the same time, I had to carry that project until the end. I had to get into interaction with those people. And I made a very interesting experiment on myself. I started to listen uh, what my head is telling me what my internal critic tells me. And I was talking to him and saying, OK, what is your theory? What can what what can you say about that? Why Andre doesn't like you? And I was listening to it and, his, and my head says, because yesterday during the breakfast, you said to Krisha this and that. And probably they talked to each other. And when they were you were you when you were talking about Andre about something totally else, probably they would talk about and they, they said you're a hypocrite. And I was listening to this theory and say, oh, and it's so convoluted. This theory is so made to, tailored to represent the reality that my head wants to present to me. It had no uh, right of existence whatsoever. And, and my head said that it's a fact. 
And at the moment when I was listening to it, I laughed at how convoluted this theory is, and I sort of disarmed the situation. And here we get into a very important element of introspection. When your head is talking to you, and you get things, uh, uh, thoughts coming to your head, in the during the majority of time, we're not very conscious, and it's not we're not very able to control that. The good thing that we can do is to increase the time, which is between the thought, what we're doing, and our reaction is in the middle. And we can prolong the reaction time. We can prolong it by training. The training can be finding yourself, I mean, thinking or stopping to think about that you uh, to think what you thought about and you can verify it i can verify it as i did it so i was thinking where did this thought come from does it make any sense and if not i can let it go and there are also convinc convictions i have in my head somebody might have a conviction that he's not good for playing piano because when the, the somebody told that in the school and this conviction is extremely strong in my view a very good thing that took to, to, to kill that conviction is to, to say to yourself you ignore those com uh, messages from your head whenever your head tells you that you're not good you just smile and ignore it and whenever a situation like that uh, takes place so when I'm controlling this communication I like to use the radio analogy so when I want to listen to rock I I put on the rock only station. I, I ignore all the other radio stations, the pop radio stations, hip hop radio station, other types of music. And I just want to listen to rock. This also applies to the obligations and projects that I want to do. If I, let's say it's a random example, not related to uh, my presentation. If I need to do make a presentation for tomorrow for 10 a.m. And I was uh, sitting until 10 p.m. Uh, on over the project. I have hyper focus because I'm tired. And when, when I, I have it trained that in a given that I ignore everything else that is shot at me because I trained it because I was ignoring other things, thoughts in my life. This is where it's most useful because I have an hour where I'm listening only to, to rock only, where my head works on the rock music only. I have a thought. Um, I will fail at this stage presentation, but I ignore it. Otherwise, I would not be able to focus on it. Every thought that relates of, of me failing the presentation, of thinking about different projects, this is not important anymore. Thanks to this training, I can allow myself to ignore this thinking. Training is the first thing, observing things during the day. That, so even if you think it's wise and that you implement it in your life, it's not like this that you will go out of my lecture and you will use it once or twice and that will be the end. This has to be something that gets into your practice, that every time there will be several moments over the day where you will catch yourself on the thought that there is a thought in my head. I, I will allow myself to ignore it. I, I can manage to, to stop it. Another thing that really is a boost is meditation because meditation is me sitting Look, looking at my thoughts going through my head and ignoring those thoughts, not engaging in them. And meditation, thanks to that, allows us to be focused on, on important thoughts. If I don't meditate 20 minutes in the morning, I know I will lose two hours during the day because my thoughts will be getting to thoughts, will engage into thoughts which are not important at this, mo at this moment. It's fine. If I go to the holiday, I, I can... I can verify if I can play the piano or not. I will have a space for that. I will have time for this. I will think that the context of relation with my mother will be coming back and I'm thinking about it, but not at the moment when I have to deliver the project or focus on something else. If you manage to learn to f to uh, control your head in such a way, it will be much easier for you to execute process successfully. I need a moment to think if I told about everything. The other thing is affirmation. When I'm affirmating, aff I'm affirmating positive messages, uh, like I'm healthy, I'm strong, M my, my person translates to the general good of the society, I'm just telling good things to me. 
it it was it seemed weird for me like for the majority of people in the past telling yourself you're a winner you're a winner you know the the boss architect i said that i would not be the guy who was affirmating and talking to the positive things to to his head but but when you i consciously looked at what our reality looks like starting from the morning you get bad news i'm going to work i'm going to filming set and things went bad you have to do firefighting here somebody's angry with me because i i everybody's tired and everybody's nervous i'm going back from the filming set to my home and it's time when my partner uh, is always through a difficult time and i i sort of transfer my problems to them negativity everywhere what else they had our head does in this situation when we're overburdened with uh, with this, our, our brain will not tell the, uh, us positive things, but they will say, but my our brains will say, you're, you're not good for this, you will fail. Uh, the imposter syndrome uh, gets in, you will get stronger and stronger feelings we shouldn't do this because we, we, we can't manage. I decided that in all this negativity that happens ar around us, is it anything bad that I tell something positive about myself during the day? Looking from that perspective, is there anything strange and unsettling in the fact that I remember the positive things that happened in my life and I relate to that uh, with uh, um, or with uh, gratitude? No, absolutely. With the negativity I have around me, if I don't get the control over, over gratitude and over my f some positivity, things will not go well. So I introduce this positive signal on purpose and I allow myself to do that. As I said, this is the matter of training. It's a thing you have to understand that I'm not able to listen to those things and they will start to work magically. You have to put your focus on your daily perspective. Every day I have to do a good job. Every day I need to meditate. Every day I need to uh, get get this exposition control running and to think why things like that happen in my head or start to ignore them. The, these are the things that ha ha come back over and over again as, as thoughts. With time they become so boring because I ignore them, they stop uh, appearing in my head. Of course, let's verify if uh, we want to get some conviction out of our heads because there is also a high risk that we'll start to ignore something that is important in our lives. And here again I will give you an example from my own life. Mm, I, was go I was running on uh, affirmation, meditation and exposition control for a month and suddenly one day my head was in a very very good uh, functioning mode and one day all this fell apart. There were some, some turbo negative emotions came, turbo negative um, thoughts came. From the neuro lev level, I know that my head, uh, my head has entered into a um, fight and flee mode. And the thing I, I can, I can do for myself, I can go to a neuro uh, therapeutical session and or massage so that my head gets out of this fight and flee mode. It's very difficult to make a sensible decision in that mode. It's very difficult to to see that. I understand that because I quite often enter that and leave that mode. I do it quite um, uh, in a in a uh, in a certain in a way that I understand. I'm in con con contact with with uh, uh, therapists. Uh, if you're always in fight and flee mode, you will only get negative thoughts. Leave your leave yourself some time for for rest and. Get your head rest. This is the moment when you can start to make uh, things that make sense. In such a moment, what I'm doing, I let things go. I let it go. I decide that my head, regardless of what I believe, uh, just gives me negative thoughts. For a few, I, I just let it go for a few days, uh, so that my head can get a rest. So we went through that part. There's one more product that I wanted to talk about. It's radical forgiving. And I use that in my life. 
it is also so that we agree to do certain things. We oblige ourselves to keep that to that tight. We oblige ourselves to write the scripts and things don't work, for example. We fail and our head then uh, starts to sort of scold us, to starts to chastise us uh, and demand from us very high standards. It also results from the fact that in the Instagram you see your friends with everybody uh, making their beds in a beautiful way, meditating, spending their lives in, in beautiful harmony and balance. But of course, we and we start to expect the same from us, even though it's not true, because we, we compare ourselves to others. And if we don't get the results across, let's forgive ourselves. Let's get another habit that in, in the in the mass moment when I will start to when I will start to scold myself for not delivering the result that I expected because it's not that I can function the whole life uh, without the flight and fight and flee mode and I will not talk to somebody in a, in a, in a bad way it's not that uh, we won't do something stupid in our lives and then we regret it but but the habit that we can mm, develop is when you see you're being negative to yourself just you say to yourself, I uh, uh, I forgive myself. And it's, you have to see your sort of, uh, your, uh, uh, that you can forgive yourself in any situation. Sometimes you can be hy hypocrite because if we have, uh, if we are scolding ourselves for something that, that happened and uh, you can't, do anything about it just draw conclusions and move on not do not waste time and uh, do not waste time for a for a dialogue in your head that gives you nothing getting to the end of my mm, presentation i talked i i will tell you about the problem i had uh, in my work i had the reputation of a person who does not deliver on time i decided to do something like this i bought a book by tracy i read that book and I draw conclusions. The first thing that made me laugh, because I read n a number of other sources on YouTube, how to how to increase your product productivity, etc. The first thing that I noticed is that building your productivity, from the point of view of what I want to do, is 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 banal. Everybody is talking about the same. Create a plan, write down tasks, and just do them. And in initially, I fell into the trap that I wanted to uh, to make to make a sana to make it written down in perfect way so that every project has its own uh, field and a beautiful color etc etc so it all looked perfect after time it made no sense i use for the, the just a notebook in macbook you have a you can you have a, a notebook with checkbox and this is what i operate with to manage my tasks there are also days when i don't use this I don't use my notebook because I decided that I will plan everything in. Uh, I will write out and consistently. I will write in my gym. I will write my in my foot and when I will rest. Maybe it works for someone. After a time, it it showed to have no sense for me. So we have a lot of projects in our heads. Let's put them in a table because this is also a moment when our head will not get into a. F f into this moment when I'm talking uh, while I'm working on this video and then suddenly a thought I was supposed to do something for my customer from another for, from another industry and then I start to my thoughts disperse and I lose focus I lose focus because I do not have it written down so write down your tasks it's it's very essential but don't just pour over it don't don't uh, spend too much uh, time over it it sometimes it has to be so simple and stupid that you use it inconsistently. If you're better organized by than me, you can add things to me. I'm not like that. Another thing that I did before I started to uh, to write down my tasks, Brian Tracy recommended that this is what I do. I obliged myself to. I promised myself that I will be the productive person and I will look at me as a productive person which delivers things on time and the magical thing happened because there is a rule in this book that if you're able to do something in three minutes do it if i write an email if somebody just asks you to send a folder with a 
with with uh, with uh, photos. I fell into this trap before. It's an easy task. I will do it later. And now I do it immediately, which means that somebody will get the the pictures immediately because and me because the reality is if I do it early after the whole day I would for I would forget obviously that it, uh, if I didn't because I ignored things which were simple when I did things in three minutes I felt additional mm, uh, uh, the I, I felt the stat status of being a productive person and then if I didn't look at myself as a person who does not deliver on time suddenly my brain started to work in a slightly different way it's a it's a something there's something like selective perception you want to buy a car let's say it's a red red cinquecento and at the moment when i want to buy a red cinquecento suddenly this red cinquecento i can see it on every corner of the street why does it happen so not because suddenly everybody uh, people in warsaw went out to buy a red cinquecento and it, it appeared magically it's just because my mind starts to enter the mode of selective observations of a certain scheme of a certain situation it applies not only to red cinquecento but everything if i suddenly focus on being productive then my hyper focus will be sus sustained it will cause other people around me to change the opinion about about me the, uh, when other people around me will change the, the opinion about me it will be even easier for me to sustain the status quo and it will be easier to hold on to that and of course there will be moments when again you will fail in a project something will go wrong what should you, you do then yeah forgive yourself smile at yourself you cannot be negative to yourself because that that you failed that you broke your word because again the, it will it will be a thing that will not bring anything positive to you so treat your obligations seriously but if something goes wrong just for be for uh, just forgive yourself and these are and when i started to do the tasks in three minutes and i decided wow i did one, one task three two tasks three tasks suddenly your productivity starts to rise so I didn't do things. I also started to control my working time. I didn't do things after 8 p.m. because a much better system is to do them uh, compressed during the day. Wh wh whichever book uh, you read about time management, about productivity, they are, these are simple things. Everybody has different things. I like I, there's Eisenhower matrix, for example, where you refer to things, priorities, or things that we can. Uh, we can delegate it's not possible to everyone because not everybody has people to whom you can delegate however each of those things is a system uh, just adapt it to yourself and choose the one that works for you and to finish my presentation in case studies that that took place uh, during the fso i wanted to get together to collect everything that i was talking about there was a situation in FSO when we shot um, like feature scenes, like n narrative scenes, uh, an interview with Shimon Majewski. The deadline are uh, the deadline is 5:30 today, and all those files got lost. They got deleted. And when something like that happens in life, that we really suffer out of this, and we we cannot do anything about that, then I remember. Mm, an example of Dale Carnegie in his book on how not to worry and he he wrote about the situation when the, when the teacher entered the room where his students were he took uh, a jar like this and takes the jar and and throws brutally into the sink and breaks it and asks the students what just happened and the students are shocked and they don't don't know what to, don't know what to say so he explains to them then this jar is broken yes it's its content went into the drain and we can do nothing to reverse that project process it's it's gone you can't reverse the situation and learn that whenever something happens we're not able to do anything to reverse the situation we go we go back to agency we move on to agency where first we tell that to ourselves and then it's not that it works immediately 
it's not that you have your problem is solved we have sadness we are, we have anger inside of us what i did in the in the next moment i came to a person close to me and i told them about them i knew that i can get support from them i i cried over the phone i told about that uh, the, my emotions went down i decided okay i'm ready to move on i can let it go i can move on without thinking what should i do in this situation i asked my situation what should i create in this situation at the end of the day it should be it must be a film that will be good that you will be able to publish that somebody will tell say that this movie is good it doesn't it, nobody's interested that your files are gone this 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 message is like for no one that that i mean i can tell my story and make people sad but uh, but at the, at the end of the day is that people like the movie so i went to the moment of agency i decided okay i need to inform the team about that i, ne I need to get the actors again etc et i have to ask the dop if they will prepare the the set design the lights etc etc i could focus on that because i had a, a very close person in my community like in my environment to whom i could tell about my problem and get my emotions down it's very important that people close to you they, they won't tell you they, they first they, they are very important because first they can tell you they're getting far away from reality but they also accept the communication that something's wrong happening with us and we can um, process that in ourselves I made all those things that I've just mentioned I engaged the actors again 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 and I felt really okay with that, but of course, automatically my my head uh, in the editing, I had I had messages in my head. No, this material is not as good as, as the other one, because our head immediately starts to work like that. But because your head doesn't understand that that the files were de deleted, you just say it used to be better. What what do I say? I controlled my exposition. I looked in, uh, told to my head. Oh, yes, I understand. There is no option, and my head said, okay, no problem. And I had to do that, I don't know, 30, 50 times. I was editing uh, the interview with Shimon. I said, ah, I would love to have the camera be. I would love to have the recording from the other camera. OK, at my head, uh, I said, these files are gone. And I smiled at myself. So even when this, ca when, when the smile, uh, when you smile to your head, when you smile to yourself internally, it's a great moment because you change the emotions in your head. You're scolding yourself for something, you feel bad about something, and then you smile and you forgive. This is something, remember, it's it, it's training, it's something that you have to do and practice. The, re the second recording went very well. And what I obliged myself to, that I will repeat the, the, the film, the, the filming, uh, I prepared the film, you will see that at, at 5.30, but all, it looks like it's going to be good, it's going to work, and work not for the, work not for all these, these things that I did before, not the focus that uh, I trained, not that after the FSO I will go uh, to have a f several days of rest, after a lot, uh, because that was very intensive, I, I cannot allow myself to jump straight into work again, because because I would fail the project uh, if I uh, if I agreed to a, a big project r r right after the FSO. Maybe this is this element of rest which we have to allow ourselves for. I think we're approaching the end. I think that to a certain extent I uh, explained everything. So now it's time for a Q&A session.
Angle Translating with the Swahili does not have a microphone. This concentration, this focus, has a different mode of character. I, every time getting into a movie is very difficult. It's like a sport. You have to understand that our life is a combination of a physical activity on the set. You have to walk around, you have to carry things, and working on the computer uh, where, the, where the, there's all, all the tension between your head and and your fingers. These are the two modes of activity. Many times I dealt with with uh, beginners, with uh, with uh, mm, filmmakers who, after several weeks, did not even know their own name. I mean, they were so exhausted. I knew a guy who was uh, driven to to hospital for two weeks because he, he was sitting at the computer f throughout for many years and then he went on the set and he couldn't bear it physically. I think you're, you, you, what you said is very interesting. Uh, um, of course, uh, during the day, uh, you know, during the day, you know, on the, on the, set, uh, on the set, um, I, I, w I take a break to sleep. Um, in bigger uh, movies, I have a camper. In smaller mm, uh, movies, I I don't. But I always take care to sleep during the day, just to relieve the one hour or maybe mm, half an hour to relieve that intensity. I'm usually much older than the crew. Uh, I, but I can see that in the second part of the day, young younger people are totally exhausted, and I'm fresh because I refresh myself. That's one. The second thing that I do is what I found that is very characteristic that that m many creators are really easy to get depressed after the project because after the project you're in hype mode and you don't know what to do with yourselves this is the depression is also related to retiring you know like in the United States you have situations of people who are work intensively and especially the grips the the labor unions m noticed that the grips b they, they, are s they work so intensively uh, that after two years of their retirement they usually die. D you know, people sit in front of TV, uh, they do nothing. The organisms see that something happens, uh, and after two years they, they it, it just gets into shut off mode. I love sports, and I I'm trying I'm changing this film emotion to sports emotion. Uh, when I was making films, uh, in the winter I was going skiing uh, uh, or and doing a lot of sports. 
otherwise. So one emotion was replaced by another emotion and it deleted all the evil sort of leftovers that were left in my head. I would sum up uh, um, s several things here because the, the psychosomatic problems that we also deal with our uh, studio, you do not have like um, you do not have re research about that. But we talk with our friends quite often that the majority of problems, uh, things like tumor, like pa back pain, problems like uh, elbow pain, pains in different uh, random things that happen in your body. There are schematics that can cause the thoughts and emotions that appear in our heads when they are wrong. That they they influence a certain, for example, anger is usually connected with uh, with the liver. It might be going to anatomy that if you have a lot of inflammation here, then your um, your abdomen muscles stop working. So when you when you the, the your uh, your neural system understands you have a problem with the liver, they start to th shut off things uh, in your uh, in your muscles in front. Then th th your back has to work stronger, and then the compensation starts and it leads to further injury. We have a certain battery in us during the day that we use for different things. If I will use dur during the day t twice or three times energy to 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 carry the camera because my body does not function right i would i you know i could use one third of this energy for the proper carrying of camera if i don't uh, and but if i do not uh, care about my mental uh, i spend more energy so uh, sandra i i'm listening to you A short introduction. I was I working as a as a masseuse, so this is very close to me. This is also how we met uh, Krzysztof. Mm. So every day I touch bodies of people, and all this psychosomatic element is very close to me. And uh, everybody will lie to us. We lie to ourselves. We serve ourselves this. Uh, 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 saying I will do it, I or I don't feel it. I, uh, I, but our body will never lie to us. Uh, uh, you always pay with a stroke or with a tumor or so anything else. Let's put in anything we want, and I think that taking care about your mentality is extremely important. And from thought to. And Krzysztof, it's great that you said that you introduced this a very important element and that you, uh, Swami, shared your experience. Because how long can we ignore our emotions? How long can we ignore our reactions? And this is not also about manipulating uh, or th pretending, but I really dream about the world where we're uh, listening to our body and we behave in a, uh, accordingly to its needs. I'm I'm so glad Krzysztof that you invited me because I expected something totally different. But this was really moving because I really think that this should be in the main Ola with full uh, with full house present. And your commentary really moved me because I was thinking about this. All those individualistic activities, taking care of yourselves, are extremely important. But this is the only thing that you can do, and what is really within our reach. However, I think, and this is also mainly directed at you, is there any faith or into systemic change because what we hear here are, I think it's um, putting a plaster on the on the bleeding outer it won't change anything uh, one guy will uh, take care of himself the other one not the one will go into alcohol because they think it's okay that, that will give him relief and the other one into narcotics and do something like sports but we're talking about individualities here and let's agree this system is pathological is there any idea or because that the trend exists i can see that people are more and more aware that that you don't can't work like four days work for four, four days uh, work week it starts to work in different industry from your perspective is there any chance that in a movie we could expect any systemic change if so whom who will do it but the young people who are just entering this industry any guidelines 
any advice, any ideas? As you know, we have the production group here, this year. In the lecture I had, I was talking about certain possibilities, mm, which practically could change the the uh, the the Im image of the industry or the the situation in the industry, but the basic things, or the basic thing, is currently. That's why Film Spring Open was uh, organized. Uh, for years, I've been um, believing that the uh, author-based, like artist-based system, um, that which which we have in Europe, ba based on the conductor, uh, we have that in Europe. It's not a bad thing. It will not disappear but it's overused. It's a practically the only system we have that when the director is the god, decides about everything and everybody, everything that he says has to be carried out to some extent. For many years I was, I'm amazed that there are no creative teams. As Christoph was saying about the, the, the changing of your environment from a toxic one to a non-toxic one, building your if i'm working in a team i'm working let's say abroad so, sometimes you know i used to work abroad we had like teams of 50 people up to 150 people like it was in harry potter i encounter many different types of people i do not know the community there i just i'm just left with the general knowledge how people uh, work how me how people um, work at the job place I also had examples of being in a toxic community and this actually can kill you so like gossip personal attacks negativity uh, become a nagging thought which I cannot deal with I don't have the skills trained uh, um, to, uh, that will allow me to ignore it and they always touch me deeply um, how can you you know this is the problem with building your team uh, well, how but can, how can you build a team if you meet people in the uh, in the in, in the coffee to talk about the project you don't know if he's a, if the person is a psychopath or not So you have to talk to those people, and not in the forms of a coffee shop talk, but you have to work with them on the set. The, the award for the films that you make is the possibility to 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 set up the base or a team or a base of a of a work. This you will not get any awards for the films that you do in Film Spring Open. A lot of good is happening here in the form of the teams that were created here. The the whole new media group, Sobek, etc. They have to cooperate. They, they are close-knit group. Sobek, Konrad, Jaya. And s some other people who are in that team. These are people who created teams in here, in FSO. And that's a great success. This is a thing, with it, which is the base. We can m make work pleasant. We want we we might we might be re ready to uh, meet people and not have a hangover after working with others. I mean, w working with Krzysztof Kieślowski was like this. We had we had a community with whom we could spend all our days because it didn't differ. There was no difference between spending time at work and outside of work. I mean, they were they were great people. So, you know, I knew somebody who would make two days of shooting. He would send the whole uh, crew home. He would edit. Um, uh, and then he would get the whole crew back. Is it more costly? If we spend the money in two parts, if we have a... In such a situation, the director works in much less stress and, and avoids something which is also, also a certain plague. 
is that you know the young d- director is also a producer so he goes from one to person to another with his project and before he starts to make this film he loses he loses interest in his own idea it's not a love at first sight anymore quite often it is the moment uh, the, you, the, or they're also at the brink they're already at the brink of divorce with their projects sometimes for y- you know it takes years getting to a full feature film it's years uh, the director loses emotional contact with the project they, they he, to, he has to or she has to tell a story about their movie r- again and again and uh, uh, f- by this repetition it they wear out the idea so when he th- this break that he takes from the project it allows him to refresh um, his idea for the movie and his love for the movie um, you know the film is a meeting of great individualities and this is it's a very difficult thing I'm sorry, but this is too quiet. So there are methods, starting from the team, you know, we are, the director is a very lonely person on the set and these leadership elements make him understand that whatever he says is a law. I have m- very dif- uh, I have different examples of such uh, directors who, uh, Gorga for example, was shouting at the set you know, you can't make a film like that. You can't treat another person like that. But this, th- this is the core of of the author-based uh, system. You can do anything on the set. Uh, uh, there was a situation in the Amer- American set. I hit the the actress, and I had uh, also a conflict with the director, and I wanted to to resign from this project but you, uh, and i was talking to the producers and said you know he's so emotional he's so engaged etc uh, you know his emotionality was in hitting uh, a woman in the face he hit meg ryan in the face i mean he he had of course he knew he, he was hitting he wasn't hitting a meg ryan in the face he knew he, whom he could hit so he was a psychopath uh, it's it's absolutely um, outrageous there should not be a situation when the when you lose control over yourself it's a he's a sick man who makes the environment toxic if I didn't work with him I wouldn't know that uh, working with him is like that that he's a monster really anybody else I really like this I, I, uh, idea by Alan's and this uh, this is a very comfortable um, uh, uh, I understand this is was also um, a debut by Alan what he had two weeks uh, and then a week of, of a break because it's an ideal model uh, of working working on the city is always some sort of a sacrifice of a family life for example it's something that is really scares me the most in all this but uh, it's very difficult to resign from a, from some internal imperative that forces you to create and now I think I wonder how can you or can you at all is there a chance uh, for the young people to have the right of to say in the context of big companies that give them the chance and we feel as if we uh, got the chance of a lifetime because we can check out test ourselves and we entering a world which got which was created in a totally different way that we imagined a good idea is Tomek Wasilewski. A good uh, b- b- yeah. um, 
a good example is Tomek Vasilisky. He made the film uh, the, the the Bedroom, and it was like a very very low budget, uh, and he got a lot of awards, and it was the beginning of his big career. He's like now a multi awarded artist. It consisted in three or four. He met three four people uh, along the across the air for a for a for a dinner, and they rehearsed, 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 rehearsed. I don't remember how. <laughs> it was fourteen or fifteen shooting days. And they had everything rehearsed to the most, to the finest detail. You could make such a film on on your mobile phones now. There, are, you have cameras. You have cameras in the um, in the storehouse. Not nobody takes the, these are ex really good cameras, and you could take advantage of that too. Right now. If you're talking about the possibility of, of making movie, the only thing you need is a backpack for the equipment. You have software in the in your mm, laptop for editing. I, even at the level of free version, everything is there. When it comes to color correction, um, it's a Hollywood standard right now. You c you have access to Avid, and you have plenty of things that make it easier for you to to work. And you can edit everything uh, within one s one piece of software. And going from you don't even you have to move from one piece of software to another. And so there, there is there are no obstacles to make uh, to make a very good film. Um, and this pressure, pressure, and uh, um, giving in to uh, the big corporations' pressure is also a, a bit of a sick um, method. This year we have uh, ray red eight K uh, cameras, but what do we need them for? Eight K. I mean, we don't have four K in the cinema. Eight K is, of course, a very useful when you're moving uh, specialist film films when you have a lot of visual effects, like Harry Potter, for example. But if you're doing a psychological drama, low key film in somebody's room. I mean, this uh, resolution is the money thrown out of the window. In film school, uh, they put an accent on technique. Sorry, it's too soft again. Somebody has millions. They, they they can they can shoot with whatever they want. But uh, but getting too high technology for your needs is throwing things out of the window. I think this discussion is on agency. We're talking about the system, which is set up in a pathological way, and the reality is so that if I get into my head to change the system, and I will be working on the on changing the system, then quite often I see that is it's a path towards nowhere, towards burnout and too many bad things. But I can see that at the moment you can get into your head, uh, uh, take care of yourself to take care of others. And I was looking for a long time how I can influence others, how I can influence reality. The strongest element of influencing reality is management, managing self in such a good way that showing yourself that I do uh, um, film sets in a um, in a good way and make people happy on my crew and I have to create s such management skills to lead that and only we are the inspiration for that other people who are showing them that you can do it somebody can follow you and you can create a new system and the old system can fall because entering the old system and trying to uh, move the, 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 the elements that are there for years it never works and of course only when you enter with a new proposal doing your thing doing things out of passion with your hap being joy with your joy out of um, out you get out of work because I have this pressure to learn piano I will not I will not 
uh, learn because I will be scolding myself, but only when I'm happy to play the piano, when I expect But this process is going because I want to do it. I will learn to play this instrument because um, I will have good uh, I will have good thoughts about it and I would love to sit on the piano. At, at the end I would like to sum up that this is my system of management and some certain elements. Slavo Mir told about his system. You can see that Jagoda uh, Shred is not does not shoot to in FSO and her system of she's engaged one hundred percent. Jagoda Shred gives all from herself and then you can't see her in the FSO because th she does not have one gram of energy um, to to socialize, so she disappears disappear in her room. But if you went to her classes for one day, you would see that the intensity that takes place in the entire group. So each one of us should have the, the management system for themselves, because what happened to me during the FSO, I realized that it's nothing to what will happen in my life which bad things would happen, and the fact that I will be training my good habits in the moments where things are difficult. And when I survive this, when when life hits me hard, I will really need those habits the most, and then they can save your life. So it's worth to do the training, even if the times are good, even if I think that I can let it go. No, train it for and wait for the hard times. Yes, I have a short question. I'm the guy who says that you should stop, finish. So you should finish. And I will tell you that to you in a moment. And one sentence to what you said, guys, right now, in Poland, we're working to force an 11 hours break between the, uh, between the shooting days. Please, have, we should all accept that and start and back it with all our might. Uh, they also think that the thing about, about to introduce a French system which allows nine hours of work and half an hour of break, so so that you have a choice. So if anything, if I, please don't be the people, uh, 14 hours, oh yeah, well that would be okay, we'll manage. This is for all of us. And f the question for you is that, um, a few days ago, we had Konrad Kruczkowski, who had an interesting um, lecture, how to deal with failure. During that lecture, I had this idea regarding to what you said about Instagram. What would happen if we started to post or inform people with some tag about things that w in which we failed? For example, I'm trying for threes. I've, I tried to get to... It's the Grand Press, that's the YouTuber Awards, yes, and the, uh, the same people win there every, every time. I don't know why. I mean, they are good, do interesting stuff, but something is wrong in that system. And I wanted to write a post. Third time in a row, I was not nominated, even though I made an interesting thing for Ukraine, for example. I made an interesting document about pe Polish people who help Ukrainians. People felt better when I showed that because it showed that Poland helped and I showed the true Polish mm, heroes. And I was wondering with Konrad after the lecture, what if every now and then you would write about your failures? I, is it a stupid idea? Is it pathological? What if in my role, in my Instagram, I would write with some hashtag, uh, I failed uh, about that I didn't make it to the festival or that uh, the files disappeared or th that I was supposed to come up with something uh, and I failed, etc., etc. Is it a good idea in your view? I also see that among the contacts uh, which show the success, beautiful life, etc. When we see, when we introduce the content which is not colorful and we add to the story because this is an element of adding to the story, it's a building of storytelling. Not that I got to grant video awards, but sh you show the process and you're building engagement uh, with your community because that's more interesting. It's a more interesting thing that uh, I think this adds to the content. But you have to be careful to to, to know what motivation you had. Uh, if you sort of add some value to your community, 
and make things less lonely. Because every, each one of us is, is a human being, and you have to ask whether you do it because you're sad and you want to get the, the approval. Because you're getting the approval from the people in Instagram, and uh, already. Yes, but the scary thing is that people, especially in our country, are helped with reading about the failures of other people. If I see that somebody whom I respect, uh, he did something wrong. Um, I'm sorry, but uh, many people have it like that. I'm not thinking like it's ha, you earned it, but no, 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 he has a huge problem right now. So he's a human being just like me. So writing will not writing about your own failures would not give wings to other people that would think that Mario Kucharski, who's doing pretty well, that he also fucks things up and it's not the one streak of success. I think it will help because LinkedIn is a sort of a toxic place where everybody has a, everything is great and everything is happy. If you enter a, thing, a place like that, exposing yourself only to such uh, messages, you have very high requirements towards yourself. The internet is entering our uh, life increasingly. In 2011, we had the first iPhone. It was, then we had Insta stories. This thing happened really recently. And you know, our Insta stories is a great part of our life. This is our exposure. We could talk uh, between ourselves, between us our, our, our friends, and you could say that we failed because we have 10 rooms, 10 people in the room. In the Instagram, when you have so many people, uh, you know, you, you straighten by your back, you improve your your uh, comb your head, uh, you you uh, f try to show your best. If we know why we do it, talking about your failures also can bring b big ego. Telling a story because I want to tell it, not because, as I mentioned, I want to get uh, the approval from the community. No, no, I don't want to whine, but that might maybe help, because it helps me, as you said, because you had problems. I can see you uh, a per person of success. You started your lecture from how much you earn, and I also would like to do that. Uh, I also heard that that, that you, uh, I was I was thinking about thinking about you, and I was sorry that you had this uh, this problem, but it's good that you started from. I helped me that you started from success, and then you said you had problems. So by me talking about problems also will help other people. I was inspired. I was inspired by this lecture to Michał Sadowski in, in Wosie, who instead of talking the the numbers, how much he was talking, how does it look like from his mental perspective. So he was talking about depression. And he said that managing such a team in, of, in such a company, it's it certainly will have an Im impact on your head. And it's good, uh, it's okay that you can't manage. I like this normalizing, that it's okay that you're a human being, that it's okay that you don't can't manage things, that you're a you're a sour uh, gel thing on a you're a, you're a sour sour uh, bonbon on the sofa. The internet is getting out of hand. I think we have to finish. Yeah, really, we have to. Why are you why are you answering the the questions again? Uh, thank you, thank you very much.